Have you guys ever thought about taking fish fillets and making some kind of a pasta dish with them? If you have, you've come to the right place. My name is Yanni, this is Fisherman's Belly, where my goal is to help you cook your catch over a thousand different ways. I've got some yellowtail fillets and I've got some pasta. These are lunaconi shells, they're kind of seafood-like. But what's really cool about this pasta is it's shell-like and it's got big openings so it can fill up with pasta sauce. Speaking of pasta sauce, I'm going to show you guys how to make a homemade tomato sauce that's going to blow your mind. Now don't get me wrong, there are a million tomato sauce recipes out there and I make a thousand of them, but today we're just going to stick with a nice simple tomato sauce. So. God, I'm getting hungry just even thinking about this. Let's get going. All right, gang, so I've got a stock pot and I filled it up about three quarters of the way full of water. Here's a great tip about cooking pasta in general. So the big problem is pasta sometimes sticks when it comes out of the pot, and here's the reason. Pasta gives off starch as it cooks. And the only way to prevent your pasta from sticking because of all that starchy water, because the starch goes in the water, is you gotta have a lot of water. If you don't have a lot of water, then the concentration of starch will be too high. When you take your pasta out, it'll all stick together. So I've got a stock pot here about three quarters away full of water. And, that, and I've learned from experience that that's perfect for one pound of pasta. Now, before I put my pasta into this hot water, into this boiling water, I have to salt it. You want to salt it so that it tastes like the ocean. I personally know that's about a handful of salt, so let's get that in there. There we go, okay. All right, so as it's heating up, it's gonna to come to a boil and we'll throw our pasta in there. In the meantime, let's get our tomato sauce going. The first thing we're gonna do is put about three to four tablespoons of good extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. This is the time to use your good olive oil when you're making your pasta sauce. So I'm gonna put in four tablespoons. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, now it's time to add up the chopped onions. We're gonna saute these onions in the pan. Okay, I've got two garlic cloves that I gotta smash up. There's one. Here's the second one. Okay, I'm gonna add a little salt to the garlic. And that'll be an abrasive agent that'll help me smash and turn this garlic into almost a paste. There we go. Perfect. Wow, okay. Now. Time to get the onions going, saute them for about five minutes, and then throw the garlic in there and all the other spices and seasonings that we need. Okay, a little salt. Some cracked black pepper. We need to saute this for about maybe five, six, seven minutes. I've got a couple of sprigs of some dried up rosemary right out of my garden that's been hanging and drying for a couple of weeks. Love the taste of dried rosemary, especially with fish and pasta. Oh my God. All right, gang, it's time to share a secret. You know, the key to a good tomato sauce is the balance between sweetness and acidity. And if you're growing homegrown tomatoes like they do all over the Mediterranean, it's easy to have a perfect sauce. But unfortunately, we don't have access to homegrown tomatoes year round. Unless, of course, you grow them year round, but most of us don't. Anyway, so we have to add a little sweetener. Obviously, we can add a tablespoon of sugar, or maybe I've even seen people add a little bit of honey. But this is what I want to share with you. One of my favorite little tricks is to add a carrot. Right here in this frying pan, as my onions are sizzling away, I'm going to grate this carrot and add it to the pan. And this is going to add a wonderful, fresh, natural sweetness to our tomato sauce. Not to mention, it's gonna give it a nice, wonderful texture. Now, don't be afraid. 
this carrot, after it's grated, will completely disappear in the tomato sauce. So you're not going to get anyone complaining, oh my god, there's a carrot in the tomato sauce. By the way, if you guys have any special tips and tricks about making a great tomato sauce, please share them with us right down below in the comment section and let us know what your special tip and trick is to make a great tomato sauce. And now I'm going to add that garlic. There we go. Stir this all up. Wow. Take a look at this. Mmm. The carrots, the onions, the garlic. Oh my god. A touch more black pepper here. Perfect. It's time for just one more secret. So these are Roma tomatoes. Roma tomatoes are perfect for tomato sauce because they don't have a lot of juice and they have a lot of meat. I'm gonna take three or four of them and we're gonna grate them, skin and all. And this is gonna give our tomato sauce just the right amount of freshness and fresh taste. And then I'm gonna throw some canned tomato sauce and canned tomato paste. And that will complete our tomato sauce. Now I'm not going to salt it anymore because remember I added some salt on the onions and I also added some salt with the garlic so I'm not going to add any salt um, unless I need some and I'll be tasting near the end. Okay now that we've grated the fresh tomatoes inside here here's another trick. You need to put this on a medium high heat and why is that? Because we want to evaporate all the extra juices and concentrate those flavors. So I'm gonna let this cook down for about three or four minutes before I add my tomato sauce and my tomato paste. In the meantime, my water is almost boiling, so I wanna coordinate this. The pasta is only gonna take anywhere from five to seven minutes, and we're gonna cook it to the tooth, till it's al dente. And what does that really, really mean? It means that when you eat the pasta and put it in your mouth, that you can sense that it's cooked, but you can also sense a texture. When your teeth chop through it, you'll actually feel it. If you overcook your pasta, it'll be cooked, obviously, but when you put it in your mouth and you go to bite on it, it'll just be mush. So you've overcooked it at that point. Always want to cook your pasta to the tooth, al dente. And we're almost to the point where we're going to be putting our pasta in here. Okay, our salted water is boiling, so it's time to put the pasta in. There we go. Wow. Give it a quick stir. So, at, the, at about the five minute mark, I'm going to start sampling this to see if it's getting cooked. Here I've got an ordinary can. This is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Perfect. I can tell this is going to be just the perfect amount. And if I, add, if I need to add any liquid here at the end, I've got my pasta water which is a thickening agent actually, so it's, it'll be perfect. Okay, it's time for me to add a tablespoon of my tomato paste. Stir that all together and let it simmer. Perfect. Okay, my tomato sauce is looking really good. I like the consistency of it. This has been going on for five minutes, the pasta, and I just checked it, so I've got a couple minutes to go. Now it's time for me to add the fish straight into the pasta sauce and that's just going to take a minute or two max and then I'm going to turn the fire off. Oh look at that and this is going to cook up butt quick. It should be time for the pasta to be ready. Whew. Hot hot hot. Ho -ho. Oh, it's perfect, it's perfect. It's time to turn off the fire and put it through the colander. Oh, look at that. No sticking. This pasta is just waiting to be get filled with this tomato sauce and this fish. Look at that, oh my God. Now we need some flat leaf parsley, some Italian flat, flat leaf parsley that I chopped up. Some Parmesan cheese. Look at that. Oh my, oh my god. Wait till you guys see this. Some more cracked black pepper. 
And last but not least, I'm gonna drizzle on some of that cold pressed extra virgin olive oil because that's just the way it's done. Cold pressed extra virgin olive oil is it smells so intense. And when it hits this hot pasta and hot pasta sauce, the whole room fills up with flavors. So here you have it. You guys saw how simple that was. The key to a great pasta dish is timing. Get that pasta cooked and ready exactly when your tomato sauce is cooked and ready along with your fish. And you saw how easy it was. I just chunked up big pieces of nice fillets and literally threw them in the tomato sauce and that only took a minute or two. Then just plate it up and serve and you'll be in pasta heaven just like me. If you have any questions about today's recipe, ask them down below and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can. And please subscribe, that way you'll never miss out on any of my new crazy recipes. This is Yanni broadcasting and eating from inside your computer. What she said, what she Then the bell little bond to a reposo. What she said, what she know the more.